All right, well, I mentioned cellular automata a little bit ago. Let me get a share screen going here. Um, so cellular automata, autonoma, uh, have a, a, a rather simple paradigm. Uh, the space is discrete. Um, there is a regular array of sites or cells, uh, each of which has a finite number of states. Uh, time is also discrete. Each cell's state is updated at each time step. Um, uh, three, number three, the rules uh, for transforming a state depending on, depends only on its local neighborhood, not the entire world. And the update is simultaneous in the sense that the new state of a cell depends only on the old states of the local neighborhood. So um, a, a simple one-dimensional game of life, uh, we have a neighborhood uh, that consists of three cells. Here, here are our different cells. And uh, this cell has a neighborhood that includes the one to the right and the one to the left. So a, if we look at the different patterns that we can have in this two-state system, states are either zero or one, um, um, the local neighborhood can either be all zeros, uh, zero, zero, one, et cetera, up to one, one, one. So there are two cubed or eight possible patterns of states in the local neighborhood. Now, for each pattern, we have to define a specific rule to transform it. So for example, all zeros turns into a zero. So if these were all zeros, the next state would be a zero here. Uh, the zero, zero, one could go to a one, zero, one, zero could go to a one, et cetera. So we define all the different rules for each of the different patterns. So with two to the eighth possible patterns, we have 200, we have with, with eight different neighborhoods, we have two to the eighth possible rules, 256, and these rules range from all zeros, that is every pattern results in a new state being zero to all ones, that is every pattern results in a new state of one, and of course all the others in between. Um, now, if we extend this to the 2D game of life, which of course is the famous one, um, we're playing on a checkerboard. We have a two-dimensional array. And in this case, the, the local neighborhood consists of nine cells, uh, the right, left, up, down, diagonals, and the center cell. So if you consider there to be two possible states here, zero and one, the possible patterns range from all zeros to all ones. Two to the ninth uh, uh, possible patterns are 512. And as with the one-dimensional case, each pattern needs to have a transformation rule. So there are two to the 512th possible rules for the two-dimensional game of life. Uh, this 2 to the 512 is uh, 1.3 times 10 to the 154. Uh, for context, the universe is 10 to the 17th seconds old. Uh, Maxima actually was able to generate this number. Uh, it, uh, uh, it, it's a big number. Uh, and out of these gazillions of rules, one very famous rule has emerged. And th this rule is the origin of the term game of life. Uh, the rules are very simple. A living cell, that is a cell with a one in it, that has, ex that has two or three neighbors in its surrounding uh, uh, eight cells survives. Uh, if it has less than two or more than three, uh, it dies of loneliness or overcrowding, whichever you want to consider. Uh, so it would become a zero. Uh, the second rule is that an empty cell, a zero, that has exactly three neighbors in its surrounding is born. Um, if you look out on the web, you'll find lots of stuff about the game of life. 
Uh, this is one example, uh, and it has uh, various, it has thousands of, uh, of samples of interesting configurations that obsessive people have come up with. Uh, and it includes things like this spaceship, uh, uh, which uh, will play, and as the, as the spaceship repeats its different moves, its different transformations, it gradually moves uh, to the left, and it'll uh, eventually take off uh, out, of, out of the scene. Uh, and I'll let you explore that. There are m lots of different configurations. People have been obsessive about this for many, many years. So um, I thought this would be fun to in set up in, a, in, in Unity. Um, and I actually kind of hoped that it would make some kind of uh, uh, maze level that I could then kind of walk around in and as the game of life played the uh, procedural world would gradually change as these different things uh, obeyed their different rules and uh, of course it turns out to not be a terribly interesting world for setting up uh, 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 things. Um, uh, I've, I've included some special long-lived configurations. Uh, these are sometimes called Methuselahs. Uh, there's the LR pentangle, which is just these five little cells. Uh, there's the acorn, which is uh, uh, these seven little cells. Uh, and these all uh, uh, are Methuselahs in the sense that uh, they persist for a long time. They, they, uh, they don't die out. A lot of configurations either turn into little squares like this or little uh, diamonds like this or little spinners that uh, just go back and forth between two configurations. But these Methuselahs, uh, the LR Pantangle and the Acorn, these will play for several hundred generations before they either stabilize or die out. Um, um, there are also uh, gliders. Um, uh, here's an example of a configuration that spits out a glider. A glider is a little configuration that uh, as it repeats, it travels across the landscape. And this glider gun is one of the more famous early ones uh, it's a stable configuration that just continually repeats spitting out these gliders. And of course, as the gliders wrapped around, they came in here and broke it. So it eventually breaks because those gliders came around. And uh, if, if that's not big enough, here's a giant uh, spaceship that uh, is a configuration that repeats over several generations and <laughs> cleans up after itself so it doesn't leave anything behind uh, it and it moves progressively uh, uh, off to the left here uh, as as it repeats this complex dance of transformations. So um, how do we do this? Uh, it, it's all relatively simple. The bulk of the work is done by a coroutine iterate uh, that uh, uses two arrays, uh, a J cell, uh, the copy of the current state, and I cell, the new state that is generated by applying the rules to the uh, J cell states uh, with a function neighbor that does nothing but count the number uh, in the neighborhood. So, um, uh, we catch a copy of J cell uh, and some stuff for the UI. Uh, and here's the, the guts of this thing. Uh, we uh, scan across our checkerboard, uh, checking the IJ cells, number of neighbors that returns an IC. Uh, and then here are the different rules. If J, IJ is one, that is it's alive and it has exactly two or three neighbors, it survives. Otherwise, it dies. Uh, and if it's an empty cell, that is if it's not equal to one, 
and it has exactly three neighbors, then it's born. Otherwise, it's not born, and we have a, a yield there. So that's the, the very simplest version of this. Here's the neighbor. Uh, the only complexity of this is that we want to be able to wrap around our world so that it's toroidal. If you go off one side, you come back in on the other side, and so forth. And it just counts up the number of neighbors in the different cells. Um, uh, so uh, this was all very interesting, but I thought, you know, Unity is a 3D world, so why not a 3D game of life? Uh, so this is a stack of checkerboards, uh, 3D arrays. Uh, our local neighborhood now has 27 cells in it, the uh, uh, nine on each of the layers. So with uh, uh, two possible states, we have possible patterns that range from 27 zeros to 27 ones. So that's two to the 27 or 134 million possible patterns. Uh, and as with the 1D and 2D, each pattern needs a transformation rule. So there are two to the 134 million possible rules, maxima failed. Uh, I have no idea what this number is. Um, just for a, 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 a guess, uh, I noticed that uh, with the 2D game of life, two or three out of eight survived. So uh, scaling this up to the 27, it went six to 10. Uh, so my, my rule here uh, was uh, a living cell with six to 10 neighbors survives, otherwise it dies of loneliness or overcrowding and an empty cell with exactly 10 neighbors was born. Um, this worked. Uh, this worked in the sense that it, uh, uh, starting with just a random configuration, uh, a random throw of, of uh, ones and zeros, uh, it does some stuff for a while uh, and it eventually settles down to a bunch of stable blocks that look something like some of the stable features in the 2D game of life. Uh, so it, it, it does settle down. Um, uh, I tried, uh, I, I found another one on the web, a living cell with two to seven survives and eight neighbors is born. Uh, this one I believe is, uh, this case here, uh, 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 where they kind of uh, persist for a while and then sort of die out. Uh, um, a little research on the web goes a long way. I found a paper in uh, Journal Complex Systems that included configurations for gliders and various rules. And, uh, uh, here are a couple of these cases uh, uh, for some of the rules that uh, were specified. Here's a glider in 3D. Here's another glider in 3D. It looks just like the 2D glider. And here's another glider uh, uh, that looks like a little butterfly. So um, all of these were a lot of fun. Uh, uh, and my original idea that I would be making a procedural level maze that I could walk around in didn't work. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. So I'll stop sharing here and I'll end the recording and I'll see you all in class. Bye.